Hi and welcome to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host Ken Keith, professional photographer based in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. Season's greeting to those of you in the local Elements user group and to all those of you joining us on Vimeo and YouTube around the world. Thanks for dropping by. I thought we'd talk today about smart objects and if you're using Photoshop Elements from uh, version 6 and up, then uh, you have access to these things. And it's kind of a misnomer because they're not actually objects, they're really special layers in which the pixels are protected. And I'm going to uh, demonstrate that now uh, in just a moment. So what I have here that you're looking at on the screen is just a background layer. You see that it's locked over here. And uh, it's uh, at a 100%, of course, this nice green color. And I'm always uh, creating something in which I am, I have a background and I'm dropping and dragging a, another layer, uh, another image into the background layer and blending it and doing something to it. And that's fine because uh, most of the time I'm using uh, very high res images and I don't have to worry about uh, sizing and resizing and image degradation but that's kind of what this is all about in, in view of uh, smart objects so uh, let's go ahead and proceed here and um, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean and hopefully you'll find this useful in your own work so into this background layer I'm going to go up now here to a file and open and I'm just going to open uh, this picture of um, a floral display at Christmas time and uh, it's going to open it and if I uh, do you see that uh, it is about two and a quarter by just under three and a half inches in size and if I drop it into my background and I'm going to do something with it. Um, for example, let's say I decide I'm going to use this as an element to the background, add some other things, but I need to resize it to that point right there. And you can see on the scale here that it's about an inch and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. And I go ahead and accept that hit, hit enter or or the green check. Right. And then I go about my business and then I come back to it and say, you know what, I think I really would like to have that larger. So I'm going to press the control or command on the Mac and T to be on that layer to do that of course. Control T and uh, now I'm going to drag this back out. If I drag it back out to its original size, so, or thereabouts, and hit enter or OK. Now what has happened to this? Well, if you look at it at, you know, at, at this magnification, you're going to say, well, nothing's happened to it. But let's do something here just to prove the point. Um, Let's go back and uh, we're going to enlarge this and we're going to go up. There we are at 100% and you see how soft that this is getting. Uh, the edges are no longer defined and you can see that the, the type that's in here, my copyright, uh, is uh, uh, no longer tack sharp. Okay. So now we're going to do something else. I'm going to open up the same image but in a little bit different way. I'm going back up to the file menu and instead of open I'm going to choose place. And going ahead and open the same picture again right there and you notice here now it says place and if you open up a folder 
to and you have to go in that folder and dig for a picture it's also going to say place just go ahead and click place the folder opens up and you see the thumbnails of all your pictures select it highlight it there and click place now I'm going to do the very same thing that I did to the first one now this X through the object or the smart object now that it's called uh, shows you that it truly is a smart object and I'm going to take it up to the corner again and I'm going to resize it really small also Put it up in the corner I've made it really small and I'm going to click the green check mark or hit enter and there it is and now I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did to the first one. I'm going to control T to bring up free transform and I'm going to bring it back out to its original size or the same size as the other image that we had in there and I'm going to accept that OK. Now let's start enlarging it. there it is at 100 percent and you see how crisp and nice everything is And if I want to show that in relation to the very first image it remembers itself as a smart object I'm going to move it and I'm going to move it over here remember this is the original image at its approximate original size. This is the smart object at its original size. And I'm going to enlarge this now. Hopefully you'll be able to see this on your screen. Here's the original image. Here's the smart object. Notice the difference in how sharp these are. How sharp, for example, the, the type layer is. Okay. And when you have a smart object and you've accepted it by hitting enter or uh, clicking on the green check mark you'll notice also in your layers panel you'll have this little icon and of course I'm still calling this a layers uh, it's a panel now previously we call it a layers palette so whatever it's <laughs> it's all the same difference all right now there's another feature of smart objects that's, that's pretty nice these two that we opened up on these layers are uh, JPEGs that I drug in. But if I go up to File and Place and I open up a RAW file, I can do that and Place. The first thing that happens is that it's going to open up in the Adobe Camera Raw dialog and here it is and you can make your adjustments to it or you can wait till a little bit later on if you like just go ahead and OK it and there you little window comes that says preparing smart object and now it comes into your background as a smart object and it will stay that way and you can size it up size it down without uh, worrying about image degradation anyway as opposed to just going to file and open and bringing and just doing a drag and drop into uh, your background layer. Alright, let's move on to one other thing. Alright, for now let's uh, go ahead and get rid of our layer here, the one that has the object brought in that is not a smart object. Well, you'll see this now um, quite a bit in which you have a background image that is faded uh, that you've uh, that is faded back and in other words the opacity has been dropped and then the then the, there'll be something that has been brought in uh, in this case a smart object and uh, it's going to stay at 100 percent opacity but uh, you often see this, for example, as oh, in wedding photography, 
in which um, you'll have a, a background maybe of the church, of the city, uh, of the wedding party, and um, that background image has a lower opacity. It might be even converted to black and white, for example. And then in the foreground, there'll be the picture of the bride and groom in color at 100% opacity. Now, I saw a podcast of a Photoshop Elements tutorial in which uh, they were doing uh, that very same thing that we were talking about with the bride and groom, but there was a one element that uh, was not explained, and that is the instructor added a layer below the background layer and filled it with white. Well, why did they do that? Well, uh, here's here's the reason. First of all, I'm going to go over here into the Layers panel, and I'm going to unlock my background layer. And then let's say that um, I only want this at um, uh, maybe 50% opacity so that um, this will stand out more. So uh, up here, and you'll remember that these are called scrubby sliders. You can you can click on the little down facing arrow and move your opacity slider back this way, or you can just simply hover over the word opacity and start dragging. Now you'll see uh, here that you have uh, some these blank uh, or what you call the transparent pixels are starting to to show through here and that is the reason if this bothers you that you can add the layer below this one and normally when you when you add a layer by pressing the create a new layer icon it will throw that layer above it in order for you to place a layer below it you're going to hold your control or command on Mac and press it and now I'm going to fill it with white. Uh, this is um, if white were my foreground color I would press alt backspace but since it's my background color I'm going to press control and backspace that fills it with white then when you go to your background layer highlight it and move its opacity down you're not going to see the transparent pixels you're going to see the color of that the background layer or the, the image, if you have an image, another picture there, what it looks like with the lowered opacity. Yeah. So I wanted you to be aware of these things. Um, it's something that we hadn't talked about before in any of the previous 70-odd uh, tutorials, but I believe it's important. Hopefully, as I said, you'll find this useful in your own work. I wish you the happiest of the holiday season and the new year to come in 2011. And we'll talk again. Take care out there now. Bye-bye.